uh, superintendent announcements first, and then uh, student announcements. Uh, Dr. Harper, are you ready? Yeah, sure, I am. Uh, Good evening, everyone. Um, we are into school. I'll give more updates during my um, school update. But um, the energy's been great, and our schools, our students are, are present, very present. Our teachers are energized, and we are engaged in learning. Um, we've had many happenings with uh, celebratory events around curriculum nights and open houses, uh, welcoming our community back into our schools. Um, we also have our uh, early release days tomorrow, so as a reminder for our families, um, school does dismiss early tomorrow, so our teachers and staff can engage in professional learning. Um, as we think about the upcoming weeks, um, we do have homecoming. It is the weekend of October 14th, with our game being on October 15th. And so um, it always is a great event. The theme this year is Candyland. Um, there's nothing sweeter than the city. So um, it should be a fun thing for our community to rally around. We also have our um, strategic planning meetings that are coming up on October 22nd, which is a Saturday morning, and also October 24th, which is a Monday evening. Um, I always want to afford our community multiple opportunities to engage with our district as we think about our strategic priorities, where we are, and really um, define how we want to continue on this journey of continuous improvement and learning and development. So I still think I'm ecstatic to still serve and be a part of this great community. And, um, Hit that Harvest Christmas Pie Partnership. Oh, I'm sorry. On his life, so yeah. Oh, two, two. He has, a, he has a really, he has a nice surprise for the board, and we're trying to get out of the lot to the refrigerator at night. So it's nice. <laughs> All right, sounds good. Go ahead, sir. All right, well, uh, we'll move to item 4.1 then. Uh, citizen comments. Your board of education is very interested in citizen input and concerns and has allotted a period of 30 minutes at the beginning and at the end of each meeting for citizens and staff to address us. We ask that remarks be limited to four minutes and that you please speak to the issues. The board cannot discuss personnel matters or individual student concerns in the session. The board and superintendent will not immediately respond to questions prior to conducting the report. However, responses will be provided by an appropriate person as quickly as possible. Citizens who wish to make a comment may do so during the citizen comment section. No comments will be taken from citizens during the meeting. Citizens need to indicate their desire to speak with and state the topics of their comments on the sign-in sheet located at the door. The comments should be limited to four minutes. No individual will be permitted to speak more than once during the board meeting. It is our intent to conduct our meetings in a manner that is all times respectful to our students, staff, community members, and fellow board members. Uh, Julie, are there any comments tonight? There are no comments. Okay. Um, we'll go ahead and move to item 5.1, the approval of the consent agenda. Um, can I get a motion to approve the consent agenda items 5.1 through 5.4 as listed? So moved, Second, Brenna. Discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. We'll go ahead and move to item 6.1, the Water Polo Cooperative Agreement Proposal. So we um, shared this in our executive session around um, our partnership with Western Roads and just wanted to publicly have the board approve the agreement. Uh, we try to find opportunities for our students to explore um, extracurricular activities as well as athletics. And Water Polo had a rich history here in UC and we are fortunate to have a UC graduate who is now working at the high school in a long-term substitute capacity um, to serve as the coach. Uh, we have partnered with Webster Groves. Uh, they have a small number of students who are interested in water polo as well. So if we combine our team, then we'll be able to have a viable program. So um, this is really for board awareness, but I think because of the nature of the partnership with Webster Groves, Water polo agreement. 
with the Webster Girls School District as presented. So this is an action item. Um, can I get a motion to approve the water polo agreement with Webster Grove School District as presented? Motion by Suda. Second by Stewart. Discussion? All right. I'll, I, I, oh, I, I will just say this. I, I, I remember when we had water polo not that long ago, and it's nice to have it come back. It's, it's, a, it's a very interesting sport. It kind of gives some diversity <laughs> to the, the sports calendar. So that's great. Well, my son in law played for years during the Travis High School years. And um, I think it's, it's, it's particularly valuable. I think some people remember me as an auditorium guy, mm -hmm. swim team guy. But um, uh, the more we can make use of the facility, the better. And this is, this is a great thing. It's also, um, it's um, creative and, and, and very positive that we're able to do this field hockey and these, these alliances so that uh, you know, schools may not be able to field a team otherwise are able to provide that opportunity because I think the, the broader, like you were saying, you know, but I mean the broader the range of, of options for kids to be involved, um, the more kids are going to be involved. Any other questions or comments? All right. All in favor?
you see one in the middle that you said to you first you see where it belongs. So that's the general one that you have in any classroom um, at any time. And so it depends on uh, the time, the place, what we're looking for, which tool we need. So those tools have specific indicators, again, aligned with those specific content areas. But there are three groups of indicators that show up on all five tools. And again, they are directly aligned with those goals we just looked at. So there's literacy indicators, numeracy indicators, and the seal, what, what's happening with social emotional support in the classroom. And so those percentages represent the percent of time, a percent of learning walks that we saw um, evidence so we're hovering around 46 to 50 percent for those three indicators. 46 percent of the time we were in a classroom using any of those tools, we saw um, evidence of the literacy indicators. 47 percent of the numeracy, and 50 percent of the time was the seal. So that is really helping us get a focus on: Are we seeing what we're working on in PD show up in the classroom? No matter what room you're in, no matter what it happens. So we would continue to fine tune learning walks this year they're even more focused because our PD goals have gotten more focused but we'll continue that focus with those three areas so we can look at growth over time this year um, compared to last year and then the third way we talk about of course is the student work so where the heart of that work happens is during professional learning communities the PLCs in the class with the teacher so the four corollary questions is what teachers are always trained when we're looking at student work what do we want our students to know how do we know they've learned it? What do we do if they didn't learn it? What do we do if they've already mastered it? And then for PD, it's that fifth question. So what implications does this have on our learning or supports needed? And so this is how teachers are in the, in the groups looking at work. This is how curriculum and instruction supports, how building administrators support, and how we use student work to drive professional development. And then moving into our summer institutes, I know back in March you saw these offerings. Um, so we were able to offer a great variety of professional development aligned with those goals. I wanted to report on how that PG went. Um, you can see the attendance of who attended. We had 53 teachers and we had three principals attend these sessions. Those percentages are showing the breakdown of who attended by role. Um, what that represents though, 53 teachers is about 21% of our teachers, and three principals is 25% uh, of our principals. So that's about who showed up over the summer. And here is their PD feedback, very high, which we tend to see in the summer. These are people who spend their summer in chosen professional <coughs> um, And so the grades tend to be extremely high, which is exactly what we want to see. And then the other big piece of PD that happens over the summer is our new teacher orientation. So just wanted to give you a glimpse. We used a little, a different, a little bit different tweak of the uh, PD feedback because we wanted to get a little bit more information. So I'm just giving you a glimpse of the questions that they're answering and those percentages. You can see again, they're all well above that benchmark of, 90, of 85%. And then just some just some of the feedback. So part of their survey is open response. We asked some questions around right, what supported their learning well, what could have been better, and what are their follow-up, what will they do um, based on this PD. So three trends emerged that teachers really felt was powerful learning. Uh, one was that they got a really good sense of the U City community, the U City district, and they felt um, that that really helped them be ready for the school year. The, uh, Another one was SEL. We really, they were very, especially teachers who were coming from other districts, consistently remarked how um, much we really put that to the forefront of well-being and joy, and provided SEL supports, and they felt that really helped them be prepared for the classroom. And then finally, literacy across the content areas. So we worked on literacy for every teacher that was coming into our district, and that was also uh, much appreciated. And then moving into the school year, you'll see exactly the same structure and how we make decisions. And you'll notice that while we had the same large areas, literacy, numeracy, and SEAL, uh, they're a little more fine-tuned. So literacy, we're working on writing across the content areas. In numeracy, we have two focuses. In the elementary, we are really focusing on tier one, so that universal instruction that every student gets every day, making sure we're doing that really, really well. And then at the secondary, so the middle and high school, 
we're going through the curriculum adaption process to ensuring that it's really aligned with our mission and vision. And then continuing to go deeper in our SEAL. And so these are the levels, the tiers of support that we provide professional development from professional development committee, people who are looking at that PD feedback, helping make decisions, helping ensure that teachers have opportunities to continue development even outside the district, our curriculum leadership team, so leadership development around curriculum coordinators and facilitators, the people who are often doing the professional development. Uh, Transformational Leadership Institute, which is where our building and district leaders come together and engage in development. Instructional Mondays, which is how we utilize one Monday a month for staff meeting time to focus on instructional learning. Um, and then, of course, our professional, our traditional professional development days and what we the PLC time. And then here's a glimpse of those traditional professional development days as well as a link to that opening week. And so, um, again, for opening week PD, it was very well received. We had 90% in both of those indicators. Um, we'll also notice we have a much higher rate of feedback this year. We are using uh, pickup in a little different manner this year so that every session they attend, they are prompted to um, provide the PD survey right within the system. And we've already seen a much greater response. We've had, we already, to, to the date, we have more PD feedback now than we did for the whole school year last year. So it's really helping us get more accurate PD feedback so we can continue to get, provide even higher quality. And then uh, one of the questions we asked is, again, what support you need? You'll notice there's a trend. Teachers really want to support by collaborating with peers, with high quality resources, and coaching. And those are the tiers that you saw on our feet. So we make sure what we're doing is aligned with Talking about 
what is the guarantee that the structure and curriculum students are receiving in every classroom every day? So we know that we have the academic gains we need to make and we can't have to intervene, we can't intervene our way out of that. We need to ensure that what students are coming to the classroom and receiving every day is of high quality. So we're focused on, that's what tier one is, it's what everyone receives. So for the math, professional development, we're just, for the elementary wide so tier one, just focus on what does that daily lesson look like, what's of high quality, how do we improve it? Does that answer that? Is that the universal design for learning? Yes. Okay. All right. Um, you got my email. I had a few comments and questions in there. I'm not going to repeat. But I do want to repeat the comment that I thought this presentation was um, very clear. This has been a topic that um, sometimes read stuff going into a meeting about TV was just kind of overwhelming. And this really zeroed in on things at a level that's appropriate, at least for me, as to understanding uh, what we're doing and why, as well as how to proceed. I've seen that before, but um, that's probably very good. Thank you, and I hope I answered all the questions from that meeting. <laughs> no worries. You're just fine. So the students of University City High School are off to a great start. We're very excited to see what the school year has to bring. Club act clubs, activities, and fall sport sports are all up and running, and many of our students are finding ways to be involved and make an impact in our school community. Um, speaking of activities, on September 2nd, we hosted our activities and club fair where students were exposed to some of the awesome extracurriculars we had at the high school. Um, offerings included service-based clubs like the Environmental Club, Key Club, and YouServe, just to name a few, and um, also artistic clubs allowing students to express their more creative side. Similarly, uh, tryouts for the fall play have uh, begun. They started on yesterday, September 14th, and today, September 15th, JROTC sponsored a blood drive. Um, a few athletic announcements. The main gymnasium floor has been completed and is very much appreciated by the students of University City High School. And we are eager and can't wait to see what other renovations are in store for our high school. <laughs> <laughs> the athletics department has transitioned to digital ticketing and tickets can be purchased at ucityathletics.com. And finally, our homecoming game against Clayton will be October 15th, followed by our second outdoor homecoming dance. Lastly, um, there was just one major concern brought forward regarding lunch, uh, the quality, and the variety of food being served. Uh, Dr. Peoples has already begun seeing what he can do internally to address this problem. However, we still wanted to bring it to the board to make, uh, to make you all aware and see if there are any possible solutions. Thank you, Michael. Appreciate that. Um, uh, we'll go ahead and move to item 3.3, the secondary schools update for Fresh Harvest 365 partnership. Good evening. So I, I may be advanced the slide for this. I want to also apologize for my tardiness this evening. You know the mic open, I'm so tardy, so I apologize. Good evening, distinguished members of our Board of Education, uh, Mr. President Bellows, Superintendent Harden Bartley, our Leadership Cabinet, Community Partners, S uh, School District University City staff, and students, uh, community members also. I'm Mike Peoples. I'm excited to sit before you this evening with an annual update regarding our secondary schools in progress this year. This evening's presentation will be threefold. It's provide an update for the start of the 2022-23 school year, 
highlight the beginning of the year PE for the school year, as well as introduce our Fresh Harvest 365 partnership. So the FH 365 will be a recurring acronym that you'll see throughout the presentation. So uh, the theme for the, this school year, um, as identified by myself and Mr. Davis, and unfortunately he wasn't able to join us this evening, is a year of collaboration uh, between ourselves and Brittany Woods as uh, that has been articulated consistently over the past year. Um, beginning last spring, I have been engaged in regular meetings with Mr. Davis to co-plan the school year um, with an emphasis on alignment. And I want to make sure that I emphasize it, alignment and not replicating the high school at the middle school. Uh, that included examining and aligning our bell schedules, PLC structure, instructional foci for the building, our advanced math placement process, behavioral expectations, building procedures, and opening day PD, which we'll take a closer look at in the next slide. So opening day PD was, uh, we established a precedent, at least since I've been here, <laughs> going on the past four years, where we engaged in a joint professional development learning session uh, with the Brittany Woods staff, UCHS and uh, BWMS MS staff collaborated. And the day began with this right here. So right here's a snapshot of our staff t-shirt that we provided to both, and this was another precedent, both all of uh, Brittany Woods staff as well as University City High School staff. <laughs> and when you look here, uh, the mascot that you see is a fictitious character, um, the Griffin, excuse me, that is historically known as a combination or a merger between a lion and an eagle. And as you know, those are our respective mascots. And the theme uh, was, is bridge, was bridging the gap, excuse me, which is to um, strengthen the vertical articulation and partnership between the two buildings. So we began by issuing all of our staff the same shirt. And Mr. Davis and myself uh, facilitated a, a professional development session, as you can see there in the uh, auditorium where we introduced the shirt and explained um, the theme for the day and explored a conversation regarding discipline and establishing um, a shared understanding and expectations around that as we communicate with our respective staffs. What followed was several breakout sessions devoted to exploring the concept deeper, which resulted in very rich conversations that many staff reported they enjoyed and were refreshed by. Following that um, PD session, uh, our staff collectively engaged in team building uh, activities, excuse me, for the afternoon at the main event, um, courtesy of the district. We thank you, Dr. Hardin Bartley, for your support related to this, where our staff engaged in bowling, um, there were pool, video games, and other activities that they engaged in for the day, which gave them an opportunity to bond and strengthen those relationships between the two men. Following that opening day um, was our specifically for University City High School, our building PE day on, May 18th, on the 18th. And this was a day where we separated and went out of uh, respective direction of each of our staffs. Um, and our day at University City High School began with bus tours of the University City community for all staff. Uh, thanks to the efforts of Dr. Hart Bart, we were able to secure four buses that picked all of our staff up at, I believe, 8.30 a.m., right outside of the auditorium after a quick speech from me and the buses took all four, all four buses, excuse me, took our staff on a tour of the areas that were impacted by flooding. And also, um, they explored the Del Mar Divide. And on each of the respective buses, as you know, several of our staff members at University City High School are UCHS alumni. So we were strategic and placed um, an alumni as a tour guide on each of those buses. Our staff reported that they found that day to be very, very insightful and helped do a great deal to prepare them um, with the appropriate mindset to receive our students that we knew had been impacted by the, the uh, unfortunate events um, of the summer. So that was the AM portion of our, our, our day. So while they were on the uh, bus tour, I separated from the staff and was not able to participate because I had a separate location that I had to report to in preparation to receive the staff. Um, and I intentionally kept, I did not disclose of the location to the staff. So there was a great deal of anticipation building around where are we going next. I wouldn't tell anyone. Um, so later that day, the four buses joined me. I greeted them at Fresh Harvest 365 for a tour and tasting of Fresh Harvest 365. I met them at the gate and brought them in. And when they arrived, they arrived to that welcome sign. 
and you'll see um, several bowls, let, lettuce and other trinkets, and really introduce them to Fresh Harvest 365. Um, the facility is located in the downtown Ferguson area. It is a black owned business as well that has um, been developed around sustainability and urban farming. So if you look there closely, um, that is a picture of, I believe, our science department and that's photo enjoying lunch together. Uh, we provided lunch. There was an assortment of smoked meats and other produce, and I'll get into a little bit more detail around the produce for today. The staff thoroughly enjoyed the experience. So when you look at the photo on the right, you'll see several staff members beginning their tours and tasting of Fresh Harvest 365. So I want you to take a snapshot and, and kind of remember those two um, what are called shipping containers there that are the equivalent of you know trailers that you commonly see attached to an 18 wheel wheel or tractor trailer. So they went on tours in those shipping containers. So the, the photo to the top left gives you a snapshot of the look inside of a trailer and as you can see there is produce growing on what appears to be a wall. And I'm going to explain a little more in detail what that entails and then the, the other photos or pictures of our staff being served lunch as they walk through the line. Um, a, a sneak peek at the uh, smoked pork steaks that were very popular for the day, in addition to uh, smoked chicken thighs that were all garnished with uh, produce from Fresh Harvest 365. Additionally, our staff were provided with, if you see there, there was a food truck on site um, that provided fried rice, vegetarian fried rice that used produce from Fresh Harvest 365 as well. So after they received their meats, they were able to go to the food truck and receive fried rice. So a little bit more about Fresh Harvest 365. What is it? I'm sure there are questions as it relates to that. So when you look at this slide here, this slide provides you with um, some insight into what is contained inside of one of those shipping containers. And if you look closely, you see um, running parallel to the longer side of the wall, would be that snapshot of the produce growing against that panel. Um, the shipping container contains, I believe there are up to eight panels that grow produce on both sides of them. And within the shipping container, the state-of-the-art technology related to lighting, um, and air exchange and airflow, irrigation systems, and nutrient delivery to um, the produce that grows inside of the trailer. So, um, one of the benefits of Fresh Harvest 365 is uh, it helps to solve the global sustainability and food crisis. So there's a few areas of data that I've provided here. Population growth, food production will need to increase by 69% by 2035 to feed the growing population and expanding middle class. We also have a water scarcity issue. Global water demand, as we know, is set to increase by 53% <coughs> over the span of 50 years. Um, and then land loss as well. The world has lost a third of its arable land in the last 40 years due to soil erosion and contamination by toxic metals. Social awareness as well. We do know the issues that pesticide residues create um, that are used to um, maintain the quality of, of growing produce and also food waste. Um, there's almost 1.2 trillion worth of food that is lost to waste each year and that's exacerbated by risks of disease and climate controllers. So what this fresh harvest, what is one of the, some of the benefits they provide? Um, up to 390 times as productive, it's a field farm. It uses less, it uses, excuse me, up to 99% less water than it's required to irrigate a traditional uh, field. It uses as little as a, a three tenths a percent of the land of an actual farm. There are zero pesticides used as well in the growing produce within the trailer. And it is also locally produced for fresher food and less waste. Additionally, uh, just some terminology that I'd like to introduce to you for the day that I learned from um, the, the incredible folks at um, Fresh Harvest 365 is the concept of hyperlocal delivery of produce. Hyperlocal is considered to be a 30 mile radius or less from the source of the food, whereas a local um, radius tends to be less than 250 miles. So when you look at the 99% less water, no chemicals, no pesticides, in addition to the hyper-local delivery of fresh produce to the community. 
There are also precision controls inside of each of the shipping containers that influence the genetics and their expression through environmental inputs, such as air speed that you can control, temperature, the light spectrum within the trailer, the relative humidity, the light intensity, CO2 levels and water levels. We also look that you're able to monitor the light frequency as well as the nutrient and micronutrient mix, which helps to improve the plant outputs and form economics you're looking at improved taste, texture, increased yield, um, shorter shelf life because it's able to be delivered hyper-locally, and there's no need to have the preservatives that you see present in other programs. Increased nutritional value, consistency regarding the output of the uh, produce, as well as enhanced color. Some of the social initiatives associated with Fresh Harvest 365, and again, this slide gives you a snapshot inside of a trailer um, and, some, and produce that grows inside. Obviously, sustainable agricultural and urban farming education, which is an incredible opportunity. Um, school nutrition, Michael, to your point, and concern regarding the quality of and consistency <coughs> of our food, and STEM learning opportunities, for obvious reasons. Hands-on learning for youth, employment for those with special needs, employment and vocational restart for veterans and felons, Fresh food access and health and wellness promotion. Additionally, why Fresh Harvest 365? Leafy greens are the ideal initial category for disruption. Industry opportunity for leafy greens with less spoilage, no food contamination, less variability in quality, no supply seasonality, fewer risks due to centralized location, with zero, actually more than less, zero pesticide use, which helps to lower supply chain and transportation costs which results in superior flavor, a uh, new standard for food safety consistency, year-round growing as well, so the external conditions have no impact on um, the rate at which the produce can be delivered, zero pesticides, and up to 95% less water. So when you look at this slide here, it gives you some additional metrics regarding crop turns, faster up to 26 crop turns, um, high, um, whereas when you compare and look down the right at high-tech greenhouses and conventional farming, this just provides you with uh, data regarding <coughs> the benefits of using the Fresh Harvest 365 technology. And then once again, why Fresh Harvest 365? The trailer uses five gallons of water per day to irrigate all of the produce within the trailer. It uses only 180 kilowatts of electricity per day. Again, no pesticides, no chemicals, and then no soil usage. The um, graphic to the right takes you through a snapshot of the process associated with growing produce inside of the, um, the shipping container. With the first step of germination, nursery, the growing process, and then the harvest, which occurs after three weeks. You can harvest the fresh produce after three weeks. So all of that, uh, the plan or my proposal, the vision that I would ultimately like to see come to fruition um, would be to deliver a fresh harvest, excuse me, shipping container to the University of City High School campus that requires, and we've uh, done the homework on this, they've actually visited the site. The trailer requires an eight foot by 40 foot footprint. The Lions Den Courtyard is an ideal placement uh, for this container. Um, we've actually scoped out the space. We know exactly where it would rest. Um, the um, shipping container does require plumbing, obviously, for the use of water as well as electricity and their um, connections in uh, close proximity to the proposed space. In doing so, we would be the first high school in the St. Louis metropolitan area to deliver this innovative technology regarding um, growing produce at least 365 years around in what is called a, and this, this technology, the, the official terminology for it is a hydroponic vertical farm, is what we're discussing here. Um, in addition to in the St. Louis metro area, I, I venture to say in the region, uh, in doing so, Fresh Harvest 365 has already delivered a framework for a sustainability and agricultural innovation elective course that we can deliver to all of our students in our classroom. Um, that would enable them to learn more about urban farming and technology around agriculture because as we know there's a great demand uh, for workers in that area. Additionally, there are limitless uh, PBL learning opportunities that we can infuse into all of our respective content areas 
uh, within the building. Again, the hyper-local produce is an incredible opportunity for us. So imagine a shipping container with fresh, delivering fresh harvest 365 technology and produce, and we enter into a partnership with Chartwells, our food service delivery arm, where we are able to harvest fresh produce and deliver it to our students daily um, in the cafeteria so that they do have a fresher and higher quality product to consume for lunch. There are also opportunities to partner with local businesses to deliver produce um, there as well. The farmer's market is another concept that could be potentially explored. They would be student-led and managed. They're pre-K through 12. This should be a pre-K, I mind you, through 12, vertical opportunity for all of our students in the school district of the University City to access um, and be educated on the benefits of urban farming and to become farmers themselves. And as stated before, the technology requires the use of plumbing and electric. What is packaged with um, the Fresh Harvest 365 partnership is an AR, VR, or augmented reality, virtual reality, you know, the, the, the goggles that you look into that create a, a virtual reality environment. There is a plumbing and electrical certification program that we can educate our students using that, that technology to earn the certification on site, potentially in our LLC, Alternative Education Center, and then begin to work, get hands-on practical experience using, uh, on, excuse me, on the shipping container to help maintain um, the container and deliver the fresh produce to either the school or the community. So in short, Dr. Martin Bartley has already had the opportunity to visit the facility, um, in addition to my entire staff, and I believe just about every member of the uh, CNI team. Um, the school district of the University City has an incredible opportunity here um, to capitalize on cutting edge technology and innovation related to urban farming while um, developing a sustainability model that will be the first in this area and that could truly transform education uh, through, from pre-K to 12 in our district and positively impact the community. At this time, I would be happy to answer any questions that you may have regarding this partnership to the best of my ability while keeping in mind, however, I'm not an employee of Fresh Harvest 365, so my technical knowledge related to the uh, shipping container is somewhat limited. But I'd be happy to take any questions for that. Is there a cost related to this? There is a cost related to this. Um, however, there are uh, several grants and fun um, funding opportunities available to the district mm -hmm. in partnership with uh, St. Louis County Department of Health, and there are other state grants that can help deliver the technology to campus. So do you have an idea about how much? Yes, so we do not know how much we can get. Um, we believe that we can almost get to 100%. If the district, we will explore the financial pieces engaging with the different grants and the county to bring them over for the back. We were just so excited to share it with the board. We wanted to share it with you now to let you know what we're doing. Uh, we did have a target that I'd like to see what happens. Mm -hmm. um, they gave out produce But this is really getting a lot of momentum. The um, individual who founded Fresh Harvest, Demetrius, is an African American man who has a degree in agriculture and um, urban farm. And so he wanted to bring this innovation back to Ferguson, but it was intentional, and reached out to Mike through another contact. So I was brought in. So we're starting those conversations now, but we believe that um, we are positioned because of the vision that is already in place at the high school to really take this innovation, take this technology, and execute. Discussion? Question? Yeah, I noticed in paragraph three reporting that there are some, some detailed um, reporting going on, and I wonder if that's something that could eventually find its way to us, because it sounds like it's um, value the type material that may be useful to the board. Absolutely. We um this we had the first one last year and we did invite the accountability committee to attend that I believe Joanne did attend with Discovery Share that step back. It's not they look at our data, so the meeting is just the data the board already sees. Mm -hmm. The meeting is to go through and they ask us questions about it. 
So it's not even new data that the board has to see, it's really the conversation with the Opportunity Trust and some of their um, experts from across the country that come in to work with us. But the product, the one that we did have, the accountability committee was a night. But we can suddenly think about it as something that the entire board, this board participation. Any other questions or comments? All right. Uh, we'll go ahead and vote. All in favor? Aye. Aye. With item 6.4, the Special School District Educational Partnership Agreement. That's going to be me because our time is right here. So I'm um, going to pass you double thing. So we have the um, partnership agreement with SSD, and I want to say that um, SSD has just been amazing. Um, we have a dynamic um, area, a dynamic director who is very passionate about the work and is very knowledgeable about the work. We also have two new um, area coordinators, uh, Megan Boyer and also um, oh, Brianna, Brianna Martin. Martin. Yes, Brianna Martin, who's the person secondary school. So they have done a phenomenal job of coming in and hitting the ground running to support our schools. Um, for this year, we did have um, the superintendent, Liz Keenan, come to our opening day. So we, and also Shakita McRiddle, who is her uh, deputy. So just a great partnership and really working to strengthen the supports. These are all of our children. Um, students that have an IEP are University City students. They're not SSC students, University City students, they're our students. And we really wanna work to embrace that. So you have the partnership agreement um, that is before you. It is a standard agreement that we've had for many years, so um, there are no changes. Um, and I am asking that the board uh, approve the um, partnership agreement as presented, and I can address any questions you may have. So this is an action item, so uh, can I get a motion to approve the Special School District Educational Partnership Agreement for school year 2022-2023 as presented? Motion by Sue Duff. Second. Discussion? Oh, I didn't see your, I didn't see it. Go, go ahead. I, I just want to say it's like that there's such incredible support. We're really lucky to have these structures in this one. Uh, well said, thank you. Uh, any other questions or comments? All right, all in favor? Aye. Aye. We'll move to item 6.5, the program evaluation timeline. recommends a regular review of program goals and objectives, as well as a review of program effectiveness. Attached is a timeline in which the board can expect to have respective program evaluations to, present, to be presented to you for review and approval. This is an information item. Are there any questions about the timeline? Some of them, if, if the board's uh, preference is for that, then we can make that adjustment. But some of them, like for example, curriculum, we don't do curriculum every single year, so it would be on the rotation in which we would go through the review process. <coughs> yeah. But if it, it's something that the board would want, then we can adjust and make it help. Yeah. I think it's more just a thought of what the other board members want to look at. Well, Joanna, if you have any specifics that you want to possibly see more often, we can discuss that with the board. the 
Lord can, um, this is for information, so if the Lord wants to discuss um, any modifications, he can do that and we can certainly update it. So let's go. Yeah, if you want to do that, I mean, I think if you have a few that you want to see more often and, and can't be provided more often, I would definitely look to see if everybody wants to do that. Okay, maybe a, maybe a, a different forum would be a better place for a longer discussion. I know we're, yeah. I think we're doing the perpetual calendar at our retreat in October. This was part of that discussion was again the potential calendar. Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah, if you want to send an email um, to remind us. Sure. Yeah. But again, not complaining, just um, taking the temperature nope. of the rest of the board no, on the, the distance between the reports. Okay, thank you. And I think it's not to the exclusion of any of us requesting an agenda item at any time. Apart from um, time notice, if something comes up, I can go ahead, hey, it's been a while, when was the last time we the report on this, okay, it's been a year and a half. I have some questions. You know, that may be appropriate then to request that and we can do it sort of ad hoc as it's in Whatever the the adoption of the local compliance plan for the provision of special education. Okay, thank you. We, thank do, you. Oh, oh, you're right, still. we do bring this item annually to assure to Desi how we agree to deliver special education services at our district through K through 12. We are given three options each year. Option one is um, accepting the model plan offered by Desi. Option two is to accept the model plan with revisions. And option three is to make our own plan. We would like to adopt the model plan um, presented by Desi. We believe that this model plan represents the exemplars and special education practices and procedures and adopting it ensures that we are offering services in a manner that is consistent with state and federal guidelines. Similarly, this aligns with our SSB partners as they adopt the same model and implement it for us in grades K through 12. So we recommend that the Board of Education approve this agreement as presented. Are there any questions? This is an action item. Uh, can I get a motion to approve the local compliance plan for the revision of special education as presented? So moved to Stewart. Second by Stewart. Any discussion? Comments? All right. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thanks, yeah. Uh, we'll go ahead and go to item 6.7, the special school district substitute contract. Thank you. Again, this is an agreement that we bring before the board annually. It is an agreement between the school district of University City and special school district of St. Louis County. This partnership is providing subs and classrooms for our students receiving special education services if special school district cannot find a sub. So we would put a sub in the classroom in that place. It is just a, a reciprocity agreement for reimbursement. We recommend that uh, the Board of Education approve this item as presented. Are there any questions? This is also an action item. Can I get a motion to approve the special school district contract for substitute personnel for the 2022-2023 school year as presented? Motion by Stuart. Thank you, Mr. Stewart. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. Thank you. Can I interrupt real quick for a second? I've just been notified that we have a wait for yes outside and the lights on. I don't know how to work it. My friend Linda is. I'll go check on it. <laughs> <laughs>
our dashboard is that um, we receive our cases in our district um, as of September 14th. And you will also see um, listed here where the county is, and this county where the yellow category for um, transmission. Also included in that um, yellow designation relates to hospitalization. So as a community, um, we're not red, um, not in the green, but we're doing okay. In our district, um, we are doing really well. Um, I say that as I hold my breath because each day is different as we have continued to navigate COVID. So you'll see our active uh, positive cases, participation rate or percentages is 20, is 24 percent, 234 percent. I don't know why that looks like that, but our return to school um, guide is active and it is present. Um, one of the things that we will be recommending today um, is that our board um, move to adopt the CDC guidance for quarantines. We intentionally withheld that guidance um, from the beginning of school on August 22nd, and we made sure that we wanted to get school in, wanted to see if there were um, any issues with uh, transmissions, if we were having increases. We also wanted to get through Labor Day. Um, Labor Day last year proved to be a bit problematic for us as people went out and traveled and we saw our cases increase. So we are still seeing um, a steady pace of cases. So the only mod, uh, mild adaptation to our return to school planning guide will be that we are implementing the CDC guidance. Um, we are one of the only districts that is uh, continuing to contact trace. We still contact trace. We are one of the only districts that um, continues to send out a daily uh, reminder about um, illnesses and, and what you can do at home keep your children at home, staff stay at home if you're sick, and we're also one of the only districts that continues to notify of any type of active case. Um, so before I come back to the recommendation, you should have your new uh, edition of Pride in your homes. If you don't have it, it is coming. Um, kudos to the communications team and your great job of pulling together another publication that really represents our, our community, represents the city. It is really about our children. Um, you will see Larry Hughes was in the house last week with our, our male, Susanna Bauer. So he is there talking about his journey as a, an NBA player and now a um, social entrepreneur in St. Louis, which is his home. Um, you'll see some of our families at our open houses. Um, you'll see some of our families at our Windy City event at Brittany Woods, and we have these beautiful murals that our students help to create that will soon be posted on Olive, and we can't wait to get another mural on the other side of this building, completed in collaboration with our students and our amazing teacher, Marnie Clunch. And finally, um, on this slide, you'll see Michaela there, Michaela Flowers is um, doing her thing, field hockey, as we have joined forces with Rosati Kane for our um, field hockey program. So that concludes my update, but I am requesting that the board approve the uh, mitigating uh, metrics as presented to um, adhere to the current CDC guidance for quarantines. I can address any questions you may have. This is an action item. Um, can I get approval to, or I'm trying, sorry, can I get a motion to approve the mitigating measures that coincide with the CDC's guidelines on As presented. Second, Second. Second. All right, discussion? Any questions or comments? All right, all in favor? Aye. All, right. all opposed? All right, we pass our next item. All right, we're going to move to item 7.1 the Board of Education Director vacancy interview. Um, just real quick, uh, I'll just reiterate what we're going to do. Uh, we're going to have all the candidates come up and give up to three minutes, um, just a little bit about themselves, you know, why they're running, and then I will open the floor for nominations once that has been completed. Um, it is a nomination process. The first person that has four votes, four or five votes, um, is nominated to the to fill the vacancy and um, then we will 
uh, go with uh, having them do their oath of office, and we'll be we'll be done. Um, so I'll go ahead and just read off uh, the candidates if they want to come forward and give up to three minutes. Um, no particular order. Uh, Karen Bernstein. May I, may I say for anybody who may be viewing, we received submissions of information before this meeting. So we're not, we're not doing this cold. We already have background information from all of our candidates. Thank you, welcome, Karen. Good evening, and thank you for considering my candidacy for the school district and University City School Board. My name is Karen Bernstein, and I have been a proud UC resident since 2014. I actually moved here because of the school district. I completed my principalship internship at Brittany Woods Middle School during the 13-14 school year under Dr. Jamie Jordan, and immediately just wanted to become a part of this community. I'm running for school board for two reasons. First of all, I love our schools. I love our students, our staff, and I love the vision that U-City has set forth. Second, I believe I have the qualifications and experience to work in partnership with our current board members and superintendents my career in education has given me a multitude of perspectives into how school systems work. I began my career in education as a middle school teacher and then moved to curriculum development and program administration and marketing. I then earned my MBA and master's in educational leadership and moved to the nonprofit side with Inspire STL, where I partnered directly with schools, students, and their families to supplement the work that happens in classrooms daily. From there, I joined U City's team as Wyman's Wraparound Services Director for all four elementary schools, where you often saw me sitting in board of directors. Most recently, I worked with EdOps, a national organization, where I specialize in Missouri data compliance and academic analysis, while also working strongly with my school finance counterparts to ensure financial accountability. This blend of experiences makes me uniquely qualified to serve the students and families of I know our district and I'm already connected, connected and committed to our vision of learning reimagined. This makes me an excellent partner for our current board and superintendent. Second, I am knowledgeable about the changing compliance landscape in Missouri and the role of school finance in our work. And I already have experience in helping schools use this knowledge in strategic ways. I am prepared to continue this to help ensure fiscal responsibility on behalf of our taxpayers. Finally, I have a breadth of experience in education that will allow me to take a high-level overview of what's happening in order to guide our long-term strategic work as we plan for the future of our district. Thank you again for your consideration, and thank you for your work and service of students. I look forward to continuing to support the school district and University of City. Thank you, Karen. Thank you, Karen. two-term board member. Um, I have served in every office from secretary, vice president, to president. And so um, I have received literally days of MSBA board member training, as well as hours of um, you know, board book study. Um, so I do feel I'm uniquely qualified in that. And of course, um, I did recently come off the board, so I feel that I would be ready on day one. Uh, currently, I am working in education. I'm studying um, at Forsyth School, it's an amazing opportunity that I love having. And I'm seeing a lot of the things that we talked about with the restorative practice, um, how we interact with students. I see that in my work when I get to interact with students at Forsyth. Um, I have generally always stayed involved in our community. Um, in the past, I volunteered with uh, the Girl Scout Youth Group here in University City, um, as well as I've been involved with what we formerly called CTOs. Um, currently, I'm involved in University City Education Foundation, where I'm the membership chair. Um, I'm involved in uh, Kiwanisha City, and I'm so proud to be serving as the Key Club Parent Liaison, where I've actually been teaching students how to effectively run, <coughs> excuse me, effectively run um, their board meetings. So, um, I'm seeking this position um, 
because I know that I'm uniquely qualified as a former board member. Again, like as I said, I begin the um, on day one. I understand the intricacies of board work because I have done it before. And I understand that in the short term time, someone having experience, I would be a value um, added to the district. I also see this as an equity issue for our board um, to ensure that there is diversity, both racially and geographically, um, as I am a, uh, a resident of the third board and my children um, in elementary went to Persian. And finally, um, of course, I'm running because um, I'm just passionate about children. I'm passionate about education and I'm passionate about ensuring that regardless of the zip code, that all children receive a high quality education while also ensuring their emotional um, and social well-being and growth. I also see, which I missed on the equity uh, aspect, is that, again, I'm a parent of students that are currently attending the district, and that voice is currently not represented on our board. And I think I've been very vocal about um, that being something that uh, we need, especially um, parents of black children who are um, over 83% of our students. Thank you. Thank you. Our searches with Google.
looking at everybody else's applications, I was thinking of just how incredibly uh, underqualified I am for this job. But, I know it's not a job, but uh, presence uh, sitting in this room. I couldn't even figure out how to turn off the Honda Toyota Prius headset. <laughs> Funny story about that, that was borrowed from uh, my house in Kinley Heights when we were there. Uh, it was returned to Soulard, it was a Hyundai, that's how it was borrowed, mm -hmm. and that's how it was returned. So, uh, I've been very grateful. I have some friends. Did you say, when you talked about the Puerto Rico thing, I'm sorry, I know I'm not allowed to ask questions, so you can just nod if I'm wrong. But was that out of the Sean Midler? Okay, um, well, I, I have some friends who teach, and they do really cool things, and hearing about these cool things, I'm really excited. Uh, I've been to the last two fundraisers. Have you been to those? I'm a terrible salsa dancer, and everybody knows it. Um, I am a gopher, though, and I've learned as usually the least qualified and intelligent of a lawyer, so person in the room, that being a gopher is a great thing to, to be. That means to help people tell me, go there, do this, and I can go there and do this, or go there and do that. Um, I'm happy to learn. I definitely don't have uh, all of the degrees that you need to make a circle to be able to uh, do education, and I don't have the experience of being on the board except some things in college, high school, um, being communally involved. But the reason I'm here is when we moved in, uh, I have two daughters and one boy. The, the oldest is four, the youngest is a few months old. And so I thought that this would be a good uh, way to get started in trying to invest in my family's future. So I looked at how I might be able thought of a silly idea. I'm really good at introducing silly ideas. Um, so if I may, I have a crossword puzzle for you. And I got it from IR, the IRS website. Because I was thinking about something that my friends do. The friends I have that teach are very passionate about what they do. And so when they're passionate about what they do, sometimes they go above and beyond. They're not obligated to. They shouldn't have to but sometimes I do anyways. And so I looked up something that I think I'd seen on TikTok or Instagram. And uh, this is what I'm good at. I like to look up arcane details. If you're an eligible educator, you can deduct up to $250 of unreimbursed trade or business. So, being able to equip eligible educators. Sorry, that's, that's all your time. Thank you. Thank you so much. Kevin Black. Uh, and the last one is uh, Patricia Sanders. Hello, everyone. Hello. I don't see where many people over there. <laughs> um, I am here uh, because, uh, as uh, my fellow applicants, I love you, City, and I deeply believe that the school district of University City plays a critical role in the success of each of our children. And even more than that, in ensuring that this community of University City thrives. And um, I am the type of person who is continually called to serve in all kinds of ways. And um, so when I saw this, I felt compelled to put my name in the hat um, as another way to serve the community of University City and all of our children in our school district. Um, I really see this as an opportunity to build upon this incredibly strong foundation um, that has been built since um, Dr. Harden Bartley and my son started in University City seven years ago, <laughs> the same year. Um, I have three children in the district, one at Brittany Woods and two at Flynn Park. Um, and I, I really believe that the experience that I have in strategic planning and um, as well as the community on the ground um, activism and organizing work that I've done in University City and elsewhere um, brings a balance of this kind of big picture thinking of strategy and how do we do things and how do we make things happen and how do we turn shifts and how can we think all continually think how can we do it different and never say take that's the way we've always done it for the answer um, along with the
the work that I've done in our PTOs um, and building relationships and trust across the Olive Divide friends and have strong relationships with families at every single one of our schools um, and I'm very connected to and passionate about all of our children's success because I truly believe in every part of my being that when all of our children are successful when when each of our children are successful we are all successful and so it's not about my kid but it's about our kids so that we can have a really strong community and that impact the ag tech that Dr. Peoples is talking about, um, that we have kids in the Donald Danforth Plant Science Center changing our world. Um, and so I'm just really excited to be here alongside some really wonderful applicants um, and with you all um, to see where we could go next with our um, school board and with our school district and university. All right, and that was all the uh, that was all the uh, applicants. So I'm now going to open the floor for nominations. Go ahead. I nominate Bridget McDonald. I believe that she has Bridget McDonald. Thank you. 
paid a state and county tax within one year next preceding my election, and that I will support the constitutions of the United States and of the state of Missouri, and that I will abide by and uphold the school district of the University City Board Member Code of Ethics, and will faithfully demean myself attended. Um, Dr. Peoples really encouraged us, the athletes who were there, to stay involved and to try to get other people involved. Um, I also attended the One U City event, and um, it's in its infancy. It's ex going to be exciting to see the PTOs work together as one. I think that's really um, an exciting thing that we're doing here. And um, as they mentioned, there's national attention focused on this effort. So looking forward to what comes next. Well, I've got for now. Aye. Oh, I'm sorry, discussion. All in favor? Aye. Okay. Uh, any nays? All opposed. 
All right. Well, thank you everyone for attending the meeting.